Here's example three with evaluating inverse trig functions. So here we're going to talk about the inverse tangent function. Okay, so before we move on, we want to remember what's the range of the inverse tangent function. Because when we evaluate these functions uh, here, we're going to get some numbers, and we want to make sure that we get uh, numbers in the proper range. Okay. So uh, if we recall from that video where we introduced the inverse tangent function, the range is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, and uh, rounded parentheses because we do not include the endpoints. So it's negative pi over 2 is strictly less than uh, the output is strictly less than pi over 2. Okay. So that's our range, everything between these two numbers, not including those two numbers. So then we just approach it the same way we've been approaching this. We just ask ourselves uh, that same question we've been asking. So which theta in the range of the inverse trig function has tangent of theta equal to negative 1? Okay. So which theta in this uh, range here has tangent of theta equal to negative 1? Okay, so uh, it might help to draw a little uh, graph of what's going on. So if we do that real quick, especially with the negatives, because it could be kind of confusing sometimes. And here's an x-axis, here's a y-axis. So when we evaluate this for part A, inverse tangent to negative 1, when we evaluate that, our uh, answer has to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Well, where is negative pi over 2? Negative pi over 2 is down here. Okay, here's negative pi over 2. Positive pi over 2 is up here. Okay, here's a positive pi over 2. Um, Let's label this, this is negative pi over 2. And this up here is positive pi over 2. Okay, so we'll uh, get rid of this label, I guess. Okay, so whatever answer we get, it has to be somewhere in here. Because okay? we're between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Okay, so if we're between these two, then it's somewhere in here. Okay, somewhere in here. So that's where our answer has to be. So what we can do is pull out a unit circle and look and say, okay, um, which angle somewhere around here in the first quadrant or in the fourth quadrant, which angle around here has tangent of theta equal to negative 1? Okay. Well, if we look at a unit circle, we see, okay, tangent of pi over 4 is positive 1, so that doesn't count. Tangent of 3 pi over 4, that's outside of where we even want to look. 5 pi over 4 is also outside of where we want to look, so we don't even think about it, we just don't care. 7 pi over 4, okay. Be careful though, 7 pi over 4 is in the fourth quadrant. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay, this uh, 7 pi over 4, that is in the fourth quadrant, but we got to be careful because it's not between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Okay, so we do know that a tangent of 7 pi over 4 actually is negative 1. Okay, that gives us the value we want, but 7 pi over 4 is not in this interval, so we can't use it. That's not our answer. It's not going to work because it's just not in the range of the inverse tangent function. Okay. But if this is 7 pi over 4, then what we can do is say, OK, um, let's just come down here, start at 0. And then just like we went down here to negative pi over 2, okay, now we can start at 0, stop right here, and that's going to be negative pi over 4. Because okay. negative pi over 4, that's coterminal with 7 pi over 4. So if this is 7 pi over 4, there's really just a lot of different ways to think about this. So you can think, OK, uh, 7 pi over 4, if I want to come back around, I'm going to subtract 2 pi. So 7 pi over 4 minus 2 pi gives me negative pi over 4. Okay? Or you can say, OK, if positive pi over 4 is up this way, then if I go the same distance in the negative direction, that's negative pi over 4. OK, so really just a bunch of different ways of thinking about it. But the point is, that's going to be negative pi over 4 right here. And that's our answer. OK, because tangent of negative pi over 4 is negative 1. OK, tangent of negative pi over 4 is negative 1. And and negative pi over 4 is inside of this interval. Okay, so that's, that's it. So it's just a matter of knowing the unit circle and making sure that you stay inside of the range. So know the unit circle and know the range of your tangent function, or of the uh, inverse tangent function. And more generally, uh, know the unit circle and know the range of the inverse trig function. Okay, so in this case, we're dealing with the inverse tangent function. So the range is negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 like that. So we, from the unit circle, we found 7 pi over 4 has the proper tangent value. But it's not inside the interval. Okay? It's not inside the range. So then we added, or we subtracted 2 pi as we go in the negative direction, the clockwise direction. We subtract 2 pi, and we ended up with negative pi over 4. Okay? So, or we can think about it with even odd properties, too. We know that a tangent 
of pi over 4 is 1, so using the odd property of tangent, uh, we can just automatically say right away that tangent of negative pi over 4 is negative 1. Just using the odd property of tangent. Since tangent itself is an odd function, we can just say that right away. So that's another maybe simpler way to think about it if you're comfortable with the odd property. Uh, but really, just uh, three different ways of thinking about the same thing here. But no matter how we think about it, we get the same answer. And that answer, again, is negative pi over 4. Okay, so that's that. Now part B, uh, we ask ourselves the exact same question, but instead of uh, negative 1, zoom out a little more, instead of negative 1, we're looking at 0. Okay? So let's ask ourselves that same question. Which theta inside of the range of the inverse tangent function has tangent of theta equal to 0? Well, if we just pull out a unit circle, we can look and say, okay, remember, well, it also helps to remember that tangent is sine divided by cosine. Okay, so uh, we can look at a unit circle or maybe just a chart of values. We'll see that, well, tangent of 0 is 0. Okay? Also, tangent of pi is 0. Tangent of 3 pi is 0. Tangent of 2 pi is 0, and so on and so forth. But the only number uh, inside of this interval that has tangent equal to 0 is 0. Okay? So even though tangent of pi is 0, pi is not inside of this interval, so we've got to be careful about that. So this is our answer right here. It's 0. Tangent of 0 is 0. And 0 is inside of this interval. So, oops, keep this consistent. OK, so the inverse tangent of 0 is 0 because the tangent of 0 is 0, and 0 is inside of this interval. Okay. How about part C? So uh, for part C, we ask ourselves the exact same question, but now we're looking at root 3 instead. So really, it's just a matter of knowing the unit circle, uh, like we've been saying. So which theta inside of the range of the inverse tangent function has tangent of theta equal to square root of 3? Okay. So we just have to go back to the unit circle and think, OK, tangent of what equals the square root of 3? Well, there are infinitely many values whose tangent is square root of 3, but only one of them is in this interval. And the answer is uh, tangent of pi over 3 is the square root of 3. Okay. So uh, tangent of pi over 3 is square root of 3, and pi over 3 is inside of this interval, so we're good. That's our answer, pi over 3. So the inverse tangent of root 3 is pi over 3 because tangent of pi over 3 is the square root of 3, and pi over 3 is inside of the range for the inverse tangent function. OK, so that's it for evaluating inverse trig functions. Uh, if you saw examples 1 and 2, you may remember that we did a part D where there was no solution. Well, we can't actually do that for the inverse tangent function, because remember, what's the domain of the inverse tangent function? Uh, it's all real numbers. So actually, the domain of the inverse tangent function is all real numbers. So you can actually take the inverse tangent of anything you want. Uh, you can take the inverse tangent of any number, any real number at all you want. So we can't really do a corresponding part D with no solution, because no matter what number you toss in there into the inverse tangent function, you're going to get a value back. Now, it might not work out so nicely like with numbers on the unit circle, but you can use a calculator, if not, and we'll talk about that in a later video. So anyway, that's example three with evaluating inverse trig functions, and this has been the inverse tangent function.